We're talking about if, if the doctor is going to describe it in a better way, whether it's correct to say natural birth, because I like to think all of it would be natural birth anyway, but natural birth, cesarean sections, and also surrogacy, if there's anything like that. Mm. So let's understand what we've heard, the popular description, what natural birth is, what a CS is, and what a surrogacy is, Doc. Thanks very much. Sorry, your name? MFA. MFA, yeah. Um, the, in, in normal life, women do produce at the end of getting themselves con conceived, I mean, getting themselves pregnant. And usually pregnancy takes place, the duration of pregnancy, it's about 40 weeks from the time um, conception takes place. Conception itself, it means the linkage of the female and male things coming together. Uh, it takes roughly 30, we call it 38 weeks. Okay. And um, from the last day of a period, first day of the last period, we calculate uh, things to mean about 289 days from, you know, the, the, from the last day of a period and then until the baby is born vaginally. Okay. Normally, the birth of the baby should be through the vaginal canal down. For whatever reason, if it is, we call that as a, not a natural birth, but a vaginal birth. Mm. Then, um, for some reason, the birth, the, the baby may not be able to come through. And in that case, we may have to do a cesarean section. That is, we cut, we remove the baby through the abdominal approach, not the vaginal, but... Mm. On the abdomen, we sort of open up and enter into the womb itself, the uterus, where the baby is lying, and then take the baby out. And yeah. that is cesarean section. Yeah. Now, if I have to go on to what um, mm -hmm. the so-called surrogacy, um, Pregnancy, before a pregnancy takes place, there are four things which have to be normal or near normal for the pregnancy process to go on, to go through. The first thing is the man's sperms. Second is the woman laying eggs. The sperm and the egg, they meet in a place called the fallopian tube, the tubes. Baby grows until it's nine months, but from the tube, it moves on to settle into the womb itself. So we need four things. The sperm, the egg, the tubes where the sperm and egg meet, and for the uterus where the baby settles for nine months. For some reason, you may have all except that the baby gets into the uterus for some reason it may not progress and proceed into a birth whether
item that is there to, to perform its job. Unfortunately, if all the research, you'll find an uterus and put it sort of a with, uh, with the baby. It's a carrier. It's going to carry it in the abdomen, in the, in the uterus. On the other hand, there may be some other reasons, including egg, mm. or you might need an egg donor. Mm. And with an egg donation, of course, you get donors separately from, um, from the surrogate mother. And then prepare the baby and place in in the surrogate mother's room, and that is gestational. But unfortunately, or uh, some people would use the surrogate mother's egg itself, and that you know the you the surrogate mother is this. You find a means of fertilizing the surrogate mother's um, egg, egg to be placed inside her or sometimes not necessarily through IVF you can get the surrogate mother's egg a surrogate mother to help in the process of pregnancy and that is the so-called traditional surrogacy okay. so there are two ways Either you use the surrogate mother's egg yes. itself, and that becomes traditional. Right. Or the surrogate mother is not involved mm. in the production of the mm. baby, the embryo, okay. and that is gestational. So these are the two. There are some names mm. being attached to, but trust me, these are the two main standard worldwide names that are given to this condition. I'm, cu I'm, I'm curious. Just maybe I missed something in that explanation. So doc, does that mean that when you use the surrogate's mother's egg, she has a connection to the she now has a connection. She still carries it. She still carries it, but there is a lot of legal implications, right. especially the surrogate mother has some inbuilt yeah. connections. Yeah. And it to make it or more difficult for the uh, parent, the mothers, the intended, we call them intended or in, intended uh, parents, mm -hmm. they are going to receive the baby. Mm -hmm. And it will make it more difficult. So most countries, uh, in most practices, try to avoid the um, one involving the surrogate mother's eggs. Right. Because of the legal implications, yes. Okay. Let's go back to the uh, vaginal birth and then the CS. So in, in the, when I was growing up, you would hear that, oh, maybe your auntie or your mother was uh, going to deliver of her baby, but unfortunately she was unable, so the doctors had to cut her open, which you already just explained. But now I've seen that people actually decide by the time that the baby is almost uh, arriving, they decide that I want to go uh, so that the doctors will cut and take open. Maybe it will be too detailed, but what are some of the things that give rise or will give rise to a doctor at the time that he's delivering of a baby and will change mind that, um, let's cut you open? Mm -hmm. Yes, um, delivery should end uh, the process of birthing in it either vaginally or through the abdomen mm. through the cut through the abdomen the so-called cesarean and if a doctor assesses everything we always almost always try to get the baby born vaginally Unfortunately, there are quite a number of reasons relating to the baby itself, relating to the mother's health, um, that you know necessitates us to probably deliver through the abdomen. Okay. Sometimes in an emergency situation, all seems to be well. During labor, something goes wrong. We have to rush to bring out the baby. Otherwise, you, you, it's very sad having a woman going through 
nine months and at the end of it loses the baby right. because of untimeliness of the delivery. There are some conditions in which, for instance, the mother is um, having some medical conditions like severe blood pressure, hypertension, um, like some uh, uncontrolled, we call it diabetes, um, some other conditions, any condition which will impede the health of the baby, you've got to sort of terminate the pregnancy through ab the abdomen, uh, abdominal route instead mm -hmm. of the vaginal route. And basically we separate them into two, maternal reasons and the fetal, fetal reasons. Okay. So maternal reasons, as some of them have mentioned, the mother not being um, healthy enough to, and labor itself is a tedious job. Mm -hmm. You might have gone through pregnancy nine months, but labor, it's a little bit tedious. Mm -hmm. And if there's any reason, the main aim is to have a, 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 a healthy baby. And if there's anything which is going to impede the health of the baby, mm. for instance, when the baby is inside the womb, there is, the nutrition of the baby is very, very important. So during the pregnancy period, you find that the baby is not gaining weight, I mean, we can estimate to see if the baby is growing well or not. Mm. The baby is not gaining weight, like the baby is sick inside. We've got to do things um, promptly to remove the baby. And uh, there are other uh, fetal causes. At the end of the pregnancy, the baby is very weak. It may not go through the normal mm. canal. You have no choice. Sometimes the baby is coming the other way around. You see, normally it comes out through the vagina head first. This time is bottom first. And uh, the so-called breach, in many cases of breach, it, it's safer for the baby to be born abdominally. Otherwise, during the childbirth, uh, the vagina birth, you might, something likely might go wrong. Again, it's if something likely to go wrong, we prefer the vagina, the abdominal route. And cesarean is such a mundane operation. Um, but of course, everything even has its own side effects. Paracetamol, routine taking para, it's, can produce some problems. So generally, if we find that the baby might face any problem during the, uh, the birthing pro, uh, process, that is, during the, um, if vagina delivery is going to be something, then we have to turn around and usually it's about 80% chance of having a normal Both. Vagina birth. Okay, okay. Is this to suggest that you cannot, as a mother, as a, as a mother, expecting mother, you can't just walk to the hospital and you don't even know that you're, you're fine. Maybe mm -hmm. you've been seeing your doctor anyway and then your doctor has been assessing you. There's no cause for alarm. There's no emergency. And you choose to say that, I it's want to have the child, why is it years? Because I'm understanding the doctor's position now. Ideally, you you'd see, want to vagina birth. Every every patient or client, every in everything that we do, mm. the final word is from the client, the oh. patient. Mm. So if my patient comes to me and tells me, Doc, I want its abdominal root. Why? You have a thorough discussion, mm -hmm. and then. Uh, try to convince the mm. person that yeah. mm, there's probably no need. You have had two kids, both normal, everything is okay. But why now? Mm. So maybe the fear of something during those things 
and uh, and you've got to finally listen to your client. Yeah. If they say, and especially first time she says, no, I want um, cesarean, y you know, we would gladly go for that because uh, it's, she's asking for it. And if something goes wrong, and there is always something which may go wrong, you know that you've heard of all sorts of stories. And uh, even simple cesarean section. You shouldn't have expected things to go wrong. But yes, it does. And then, um, if you didn't listen to your patient, it will be another problem. Yeah. Yeah. The patient has a right, even though we have to thoroughly discuss and you know, try to make them understand. And, and it's so important for any part of medical practice for you to let your clients, patients, mm -hmm. know exactly what they, ask they, they are asking for. And what, mm -hmm. If you watch, when you ask for what is surrogacy, I try to explain what, you know, the pregnancy process is. Yes. Mm -hmm. yes. And if, if uh, one doesn't know these things, then makes the wrong decisions. And, but yes, any woman has the right to ask for as long as it, it will give us a, a good outcome. Maybe you're yeah. not, you want to have a question, maybe, maybe you're, not ha you're not around socially, you're, you're so much in the medical field, but let me tell you some of the things that miss that. <laughs> <laughs> you should see dog's face with a smile. So, we hear that if you're going to have a vaginal birth, mm -hmm. the place never gets back to normal. Oh. Sometimes they cut you, right? You should see, yeah, you should it, see it's, dogs, it's, it's, it, 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 I'm happy you mentioned it's a myth. Okay. It's a myth. Of course, things change. If you have a vagina, you said you are going to deliver vaginally. Yes. Sometimes we may have to give a little cut, the so-called episiotomy. Okay. And to be honest, it's, if it's repaired properly, it goes back to almost normal. Yes. Okay, almost normal. Almost. <laughs> oh. Almost, dog. <laughs> you On have, a scale of one to okay, ten. Okay, then, wait. <laughs> you have this, the so-called, the entrance, mm -hmm. the intritus yes. of the vagina. Yes. Mm -hmm. Do you think it's as normal as the time that you were born or mm -hmm. you've never had sex? Then you never have sex because it, it opens up. It opens up anyways. And it ah. becomes your, yes. It bec and even some with repeated vaginal births, after a while and they think they are not going to have, they can, you can go for uh, vaginal repair. Uh, yes. Oh, dog. Oh, yes. You have it's my attention. Simple. What, yeah, what? Yeah, it's very, <laughs> very <laughs> simple. Really? Oh, yes. You can oh. go for vaginal repair. You can repair it. Okay. Yes. It's a very simple thing. Ladies, let's go to the mechanic shop. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. Okay, maybe, maybe, maybe women didn't know that there were options available like this, so they wanted to really escape the route and all of go that. Through, yes. But hmm. so it, on a scale of one to zero to ten, after childbirth, even uh, if it doesn't go totally and it is almost. They're almost I, I, I think this is not so important. Mm. It's not very important. If after all your... But if you can't do it after every birth. Mm. It's open up a little, then you go for tightening. Vaginoplasty, we call it. But Vaginoplasty. They, yeah, we have plastic surgery mm. today. It's very, very simple. But it's not very important. Mm. Right. Look, birthing process is no easy. Abdominal root, mm. I'm sorry to say that, but you hear of stories where people went for cesarean and, excuse me, lost some major thing. All these things when put together, we've got to get it right. Simply because your vagina is opening up a little, Mm. You want cesarean? Mm. I mean, it doesn't make sense. Mm. If 
I'm if, tempted to ask, what are some of the dangers with cesarean exactly. sessions? What are some of the dangers? Um, likely to go wrong. You are going to have a cesarean. It means, sorry, can I use my own yes, tongue? Please. <laughs> Your abdomen is cleaned up. Yes. The skin, this one, we cut through. Normally, we go through the transverse incision. It can be up and down. Ah. And that is not nice looking. So mm. we go, we call it yeah. financial incision. So we go down the remove, cut into the ab abdominal cavity. Then we reach the womb itself. And also the womb, we cut transversely, low transversely, inside the womb itself. We don't go up into the womb muscles itself. Mm. And you can see all these things along the line. You are cutting, cutting, and they will be bleeding. Mm. So we try to control that, get into the womb, bring the baby out, and after that, remove the placenta all through the up incision, clean up, and then stitch the womb where we've cut into we stretch it up and all these stages there could be bleeding for some other reasons like uh, the person is having a, a problem which increases the bleeding um, so that this is the main complication of cesarean vaginal delivery there could be bleeding but this one uh, is partly iatrogenic, that is created by us right. cutting through because there is bleeding. But to be honest, I have been practicing that. Sorry, it's 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 part of our lives mm. and it's normal. And uh, once a while, something goes wrong. Mm. Sometimes due to the fact that. The woman has some problem like severe blood pressure, thing called preeclampsia and all that. And it promotes bleeding during even the cutting or delivery itself. And um, inadvertently damaging some other things around right. there, yeah, yeah. It's, it's possible. But it, it depends on the inexperience or something. Then you damage bladder, you damage... Uh, it's possible things may may happen that way, but the the, the main problem with cesarean session is bleeding. Bleeding. Doc, how many? How many? Please, how many SES can a woman have? <laughs> I I wasn't in the country for a while. When I came back, um, I was told that. In Ghana, women cannot have more than three. Yeah, strong. You can have more than that. But they made it not more than three here in our society because they were thinking of people getting caesarean and subsequent pregnancies. They are not very careful. Mm -hmm. And uh, so they, there was an insistence that you can't have more than three. But to be honest, it can be more than three. But each order, I mean, each operation, every operation has its own problems. Previous, like a cesarean, you have adhesions, mm -hmm. creating a lot of problems for the next operation. Mm -hmm. And uh, but if it's being done by a particular doctor and he knows what he has oh, done before yeah. and all that, I believe and I can confidently say that you can go beyond three. Do you go to the same place, the same yes. place? Yes. <laughs> what is wrong with you? Sometimes we have what we call a keloid. That is, uh, oh, you, you find the skin is thickened. Mm -hmm from growth or something. From a scar? Would it be from a scar? Yes. Okay. And then if we are going for the next operation, we just remove that 
to be it's just cosmetic. cosmetic. Sometimes yeah. you can cut around it and get on with what you want to do. Yeah. But you can remove the old scar, but you go through the same uh, route, and again, it's not very. As the more you do, the weakening, the weakening of the womb is mm -hmm. there. That's why our colleagues thought you can't have more than three because each one, there's some more weakening. Oh. And in subsequent pregnancies, you may have problems with it. It will open spontaneously, mm -hmm. the so-called rapture of the uterus. And sometimes... Um, there is, in fact, when you first have a cesarean, the next delivery, should it be cesarean, again, we can assess and see that, oh, there's not going to be any hindrance for the place. But once you've had two cesareans, it's always the next one is a cesarean. Yeah. <sighs> always? Yes, because that's what we do. It's a, it's a standard practice all over the world. Okay. That if two caesareans mean subsequent caesareans are mm. uh, subsequent deliveries are through caesarean. Mm. Even in certain situations or countries, you've had one caesarean, they automatically, the rest caesarean. Okay. And it's safer in a lot of situations. But for our people to understand, you have a cesarean. Yes, you may have another cesarean, so they will not come to hospital. That is a very, very huge problem, which, you know, sitting at home because you want to avoid another cesarean. Cesarean itself, in general, is mundane. It's, I mean... Most doctors are confident enough to say that this is nothing serious. Okay. Unfortunately, it does happen. I'm sure you hear stories that puts us a bit off, but in general, it's as safe as anything. Okay. Well. Okay. Ladies, no fears now. You know, we told you at least you'd make some decisions, but it's always important that you explore the best way that the doctors will, would advise you, even though we always say that the patients or the clients would have their upper hand in the decision. But it's always good to ask the questions, not because you heard your sister, you know, give birth to cesarean, so I'm also going to give, no, no. So it's always good to ask questions. Maybe you should be visiting the Accra Fertility Center and, and learning mm -hmm. a lot more, maybe. Um, maybe. I'm go, go look for Dr. Nana Hinako. <laughs> You'd have to, you have to book appointment, but before that, maybe. <laughs> Just because you've learned a thing or two, why not? So thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you very much. As, as comfortable as that was, the whole yeah. cutting, cutting conversation is pretty much. <laughs> Doc is the most calm yeah, doctor very, I've, I've, I've met. So very confident. calm, yes. yes. Very, very sure. Yeah, you, you asked about surrogacy. Mm. Should you have a cesarean because you are a surrogate mother? I thought that was a question you were going to ask. Ah. Me. Uh, yeah, I never thought about it. Because Actually. Because you were talking, why surrogacy? Fitting into in between the <laughs> <laughs> we, we thought we thought we thought to just uh, have you give us a bit about it and if it is worth exploring as a major topic another time yeah. then we can okay, we can is our curiosity oh I see right <laughs> Dr. thank Anna, you Dr. Yes. Fertility Chalice at the Aqua Fertility Center. Hope you've learned a thing or two. It's still the AM Club on 14. The app next, we have the plug.